we're going to show you step by step how we converted this Ford Transit Connect short wheelbase van into a micro camper van for all of our massive epic adventures. First things first, we had to part exchange the car for the van. We had no longer any use for the car, so we got rid of that. We got the van home and decided to start taking off the maintenance stickers from the back of the van after giving it a really good clean, that is. Heat and cellulose thinners and a bit of elbow grease was what got that off the easiest. We then repaired a stone chip in the windscreen from an eBay repair kit, and that seemed to work perfectly fine. Got some touch-up paint, touched up some of the stone chips on the actual paintwork. As you may have noticed with the theme of this, we're doing everything on a budget. We found a cheap second hand bonnet bra or a bonnet guard on ebay decided to pick that up and tart it up we sanded it down re-sprayed it got some new clips for it fastened that to the bonnet my workmate then gave us a rooftop box for only 30 pound we removed the bulkhead by taking out a few bolts and converted the front passenger seat into a single seat rather than a double seat that was because the bulkhead housed the seat belt bracket and the headrests for the center seat it needs them to have an mot so we took the double seats out got rid of the middle seat completely and just left a single seat in place we removed the tie downs in the back and the rubber lino floor ready to install the actual floor that we're going to be using we then took the plastic wheel arch covers off both sides to expose the wiring that's behind there there's a few sensors and stuff we give it a clean while it's all stripped out and then we can hide the wiring we take it all off we feed it through the holes and basically bolt it back on the inside of those panels the last part of the strip down is the wooden panels over the back doors and on the inside once we can get them off with the fancy clips and the screws and the bolts we can start looking at insulating the inside behind all the little cubby holes behind all the panels behind all the framework everywhere needs insulating on this van now we do want to give ourselves the option of pulling up in laybys we all know they can be quite noisy so this step is the most important sound deadening it's the very first step that we need it's like a rubber sticky backed plastic mat and we stick that on all of the panels throughout the whole van the floor the ceiling the sides and it takes a lot of the panel boom out of the van so as a car drives past you're hardly going to hear it you're going to reduce the noise drastically along with that we've got another sticky back thick foam padding that's got a bit of insulation purpose and a bit of uh, heat reflective purposes again sticky back we peel that off goes all over the floor all over the ceiling that's going to help towards sound deadening and insulation we had some left over, so we wanted to add some over the top of the back doors where the sound deadening already is, just to help aid in a little bit of sound deadening. We used the wooden panels just to create the shape, and we stuck them on just to, again, help. With that done throughout the whole van, it was time to move over to the recycled bottle plastic. You know the loft insulation, but this is made out of recycled bottles. What better way to fit the theme of the whole van by using recycled bottle plastic? It's a thick insulation that just packs into all the little corners behind all the panels, up into every little crevice that you could possibly find the amount that you can get in definitely reflects through the winter we want to be able to use it in the winter so we want to pack as much in as possible we went through four rolls throughout this entire van as you can tell we're not doing anything massively expensive we're doing everything on a budget because we do like our budget builds life shouldn't have to cost a fortune cost a living crisis and all if you like budget stuff make sure you hit that subscribe button and while you're there why not hit the like button it's free you can really hear the sound deadening doing its job there. We wanted to seal up a few more of the holes with this silver backed foil tape. We laid 9mm ply on the floor and then we covered it in a floor lino. We then also used that floor lino because we had some left over on the back door panels just to tie it all together that little bit more. We used the same floor in 9mm ply that was left over to build that cubby box at the top there. That was just a hole that was left over from removing the bulkhead. Getting to the exciting part now, starting to plan out the interior. We got some free wood from Ikea. If you go to the exchange department or the exit, there's normally a crate outside in Ikea with free wood there's just seconds it's leftover stuff if you broke a worktop take it back that's where it gets dumped all the spare panels and we decided to pick loads up we're planning out the side panels where the bed's going to go all that sort of stuff just to make things perfect as you can see we've started to build the side unit and we've got that back piece just there we're looking at the battery because that's where the battery department's going to go for the actual solar panel system we've left that little lip just there on the bed because that's going to secure one of the cushions in place so it doesn't rock around the bed it's going to be a single bed that goes on the one side that hasn't got anything and it's going to pull out into a double bed to go right the way out so it is a full double bed that's going to fit in here that was simply made again with free ikea wood and we did have to go down to b&q and pick some more up you can see a bit of rubbish there that's just because we're still building stuff we're still using the van to go to and from work commuting all that sort of stuff whilst at b&q we picked up these locking spring loaded uh, bracket hinge things we're going to stick them on the back door so that they can have a table on so when we're sat outside eating away cooking doing whatever we want 
we can easily fold that table out and just use it as an extra surface. We got some free lino just from a little lino shop and we figured we'd cover the back doors in them as well. We, it does look like a bit of a bodge job. That's job probably because it is. They are gonna be covered towards the end. Got all of these preparational bits to do first. We've got stuff like the 12 volt controller just there. Oh, that's the USBs. We've got the cigarette lighter there, a volt controller there and an on off switch. They all go into one little unit, which is just down there. And it's all gonna go on the side of this unit just here. We've had to mark it out. So we've done the outside and where the actual holes are gonna go. But we have to be really careful because there's a nut on the outside of all of those fixtures, but there's also a screw hole right on the edge and we can't really go too far up here. So we're having to really cut this really finely. So we've drilled a hole and we're gonna get the jigsaw in, in that tiny little hole and just very gently go around all these little outlines. As you can tell, we started the electrics. We're gonna put this back in the hole. Then we're gonna run all the wiring from there. We're gonna add another 12 volt into the center console in the back of the center console. There's already a cap there, so it makes it nice and handy for us. And we're going to chase those cables straight through to the battery compartment where this fuse box is going to be. It's amazing how much cable you actually go through once you're chasing all the cables from the control panel, from the 12 volt. We're going to run cables for the lighting, absolutely everything. And it all seems to go the same way just to keep it nice and tidy. Top tip here is to label absolutely every cable. We're running some cables there from the solar charge control unit all the way down the back panels into the battery compartment and connecting that up. We had a rare sunny day, so we painted the roof rack nice and black to suit the black accents already on the van we had some remote control lights that we wanted to fit into this roof lining of this vehicle but to do that we wanted an external switch as well so we had to chop the cable up and add a switch into place we put the switch into one of the pillars inside the van just so when we open the door we can flick that the lights will come on we labeled all the fuses on the fuse box just again for future reference if we need to but now we're up to the electric scary part we had to drill some holes in this roof of the actual van we've got this grommet here we seal this down to the actual van once the holes are drilled and it keeps it nice and watertight so the solar panel cables can run through it safely top tip after installing your solar panel your solar charge control unit and your battery connect your battery to the solar charge control unit first so the solar charge control unit knows that it's a 12 volt system that it's running on then connect up your solar panel cables then run off it to your fuse box some people run off the actual battery to the fuse box i run it off the solar charge control unit just because then it can give me a much more accurate reading on the screen and tell me what i'm drawing and what i'm getting in make sure you've got the correct fuses for the different device outlets that you've got i was so chuffed that this actually works perfectly we insulated all the panels that we didn't insulate initially just because we had to chase some cables behind some various areas got all that nailed in now we're getting close to the finish. The carpeting. All the exposed metalwork inside the van is going to get a sheet of carpeting. One, it looks nice. Number two, it adds for another sound absorption. So it just adds to a bit more sound deadening. Spray it with uh, sticky glue. Spray glue, spray adhesive. It's contact adhesive. Spray it on the fabric and the metalwork leave it to go tacky put it on push it into all the corners it's four-way stretch carpet so you can stretch and bend it into every little nook and cranny considering it's my first time ever doing it i am really chuffed with how well that i actually did here it makes me wonder whether the youtube videos are the future in education rather than colleges and universities but the headlining and the lights are the next best thing six mil ply we've drilled a hole in each location where we want the lights to go and thread the cables through them we stuck all the cables so we've got good cable management under underneath that piece of wood obviously we painted it and we've got everything lined up where we want it inside the van then we plugged it into the actual cable hole just up there that's where the remote control sensor is and screwed it up to the ceiling it was a tricky task screwing it up to the ceiling we got it wrong a few times but we did it in the end we cut some six inch memory foam mattress to the right size for this bedding we've got the back piece there that goes out on the fold out piece for the bed so we've got a complete double bed so quick recap on everything because we have been living in the van for around about a month now it is a bit of a mess we've got dirty clothes over there we've got the bed fully extended i'll show you that further around down there you've got the electrics you've also got this plug socket just there again we've been living in here for about a month so it is a mess turn the lights on the lights come on up there that's just our work bag but underneath there we've got the fridge we've added some health and safety sort of stuff we've got a fire extinguisher down there on the outside we've took the rooftop box off solely because we hit it in a height restriction open the back doors and i'll show you what we've done in the back here we've got cool dog butts with the mirror just up there open up this side there's the table which the springs actually fell off the clips but still worked perfectly fine and we've stuck or danielle the other half stuck that up there in here walking poles bin this just here if we slide it out it's got all of our sort of 
extra gadgets and stuff it goes right the way down all the way really cool that's all of our filming stuff along with the drone we'll put that back in there under here shoes and just accessories for helping us film that's why i need to put the tripod there here i've got this backsplash sort of thing it's just sticky on ones with that that's the bed fully extended out and it is a complete double bed over here we've got loads of storage along there that's our head torches for all of our nights hiking and just loads of gadgets cooking equipment all that sort of stuff we've got more storage down there but that's the stuff we don't always need to use the sort of out the way sort of stuff we're always off out hiking so we've got our hiking poles just there and do you know what van life i'm loving it if you're new around here hit subscribe it's free for you guys to subscribe and if you do subscribe the more of you that subscribe is going to stop me from working full time and be able to create content for a living that's the eventual goal thanks guys i love you all